I believe this is still on black vinyl. A uh, really pretty label on it. Oh no, there's a smoky one. <laughs> Howdy, howdy, howdy. Welcome with Thursday Collection Connection, where we're playing that game. It's just an excuse to talk about records. I play the game with my brother, my brother being Plastic Eric on the Plastic Soundwave Cult channel. He shows an album every Monday. I show an album every Thursday, and those albums will have some sort of connective tissue between them, uh, whether they are factual or conceptual, fanciful, uh, silly, obvious things, or uh, deep, resonant things uh, that they have in common. But we just switch back and forth. Uh, we'd show an album, talk about the album a little bit, our experience with the album, and that's pretty much the entirety of it. So we have the gimmick of the connections uh, to carry us from episode to episode, but in the end, it's just an excuse to talk about records. So in Eric's last video, he showed Jack White, something of the Fear of the Dawn, Fear of the Dawn. <laughs> um, and I listened to it and it sounded very Jack White to me. I read about it after I had listened to it and it pointed out uh, sort of the 2020-ish the uh, uh, mindset I, just, I don't know if that word is still taboo uh, or any of the words associated with it, but let's call it the 2020 mindset of being inside um, formed a lot of the way the album was made. And it was notable in that after a lifetime of embracing analog in a big way, he opened himself up to more of the uh, computer way of working uh, instead of cutting tape, you know, you get to mix it on the computer and this and that, uh, and maybe more of a computer uh, sound to it, a more, I don't know if it's more electronic, it didn't necessarily strike me that way as I listened to it. And I didn't listen to it, I didn't have a chance to listen to it again after I had read some of this that may have given me a different perspective while I was listening to it. So the experience was that it was a very Jack Black sounding record to me, uh, swampy, kind of fuzzy, and uh, right on brand but uh, maybe with a with a closer uh, inspection and a little more information in my back pocket i may have had a different experience of it now i've made uh not a big deal but i've made mention in recent videos about how eric and and me too uh, both of us don't necessarily want to grab our connections from something said uh, by the other in their video talking about the album. It feels a little bit uh, cheap, <laughs> like someone else is doing your homework for you. But in this instance, I don't know that I would have hit on this without watching Eric's video because he talked about the first song on Fear of the Dawn being Taking Me Back. Uh, but the first thing he says is Take Me Back. And as soon as he said, take me back, I'm like, I think I know an album that opens with the song, take me back. And so not a hundred percent overlay. <laughs> there is a little verb tense action here, but uh, fear of the dawn begins with taking me back and starting with the song, take me back is the 1994 erasure album. I say, I say, I say, it's an awkward title in one of the quirks of who knows how things hit you and for what reason. Made me like the album a little less initially, but which goes very well now with my channel name, Good Show Ponsonby, because I always really want to say it uh, in an English accent and call it Good Show Ponsonby. And I say, I say, I say, it's a very English phrase or stereotypical English phrase. I should probably <laughs> differentiate. I don't know that people actually say. I say, I say, I say. It falls in a weird place in their discography. It is the last uh, of their four albums in a row, starting with uh, The Innocents, their last of four straight albums to make number one in the English charts. It is also 
surprisingly to me, the highest charting album they've had in the U.S. Now, that is not the same as being their most successful album. Their most successful album is uh, far and away The Innocence. Uh, it had two hit singles on it. Uh, but it surprised me to see that uh, Always from this album uh, as a single is their third highest charting single in the U.S. And one could argue their third of three hit singles that they ever had in the U.S. After, of course, Chains of Love and A Little Respect. I remember hearing it. It's probably the last Erasure song that I heard on the radio, you know, as a new Erasure song. I remember spending a summer in Maine in 1994 and hearing it on the radio in Maine. So while arguments can be made that it's deep into their most relevant period, it feels like it quickly became an afterthought. And whether or not you include it in their classic period uh, maybe depends on your awareness of the band in the first place and uh, the sort of the tightness of your experience with their catalog. But it feels like the, the duo of Andy Bell and Vince Clark, who, who are Erasure, were on their downward slide. It surprises me that this album charted so highly because it is within the grunge era, well within the grunge era, and they did not really change up their sound uh, through this point. This is sort of the last point uh, before things, they started to alter things, but sort of for themselves and not so much to answer and try and keep up with trends. They, they've sort of remained their own thing. Uh, they had that, that moment where the zeitgeist hit right where they were with the synth pop, with the innocence, and they've kind of pervaded the same sound more or less ever since, uh, sometimes getting into uh, more consciously vintage synths or um, longer, more soundscape because that was the album that, that followed this, was uh, their eponymous Erasure album that I probably shouldn't talk about because I already talked for too long. So let's keep it focused on, on I Say, I Say, I Say. This weird dichotomy between whether or not they were actually relevant when this album came out. Um, some indications say yes, the number one in, in the UK, the highest chart position in the US, but it didn't feel like it hung around for very long. And a lot of people were already uh, sort of off board by this point. Uh, it would surprise me if Eric was familiar with this album in spite of following them from almost the beginning. Um, I think he was, he got into their first album, uh, Wonderland, not necessarily the instant that it came out, but before the next album. And so uh, eventually I'll get around to what it is <laughs> that I'm trying to say. It feels like there's a, uh, an argument to be made about relevance, but this is an album that, along with a couple other albums that I listened to, has seen a big revival in my own listening habits in the last few years. It's got it's pretty strong front to back. Take Me Back is um, fine as an opening track. I think that is maybe one of its weakest points, is that it doesn't have a killer opening track. It's got uh, I Love Saturday and Run to the Sun, which were singles, not hit singles, but really kind of high energy upbeat, you know, club music. Always uh, is a lovely song, but it's also got Man in the Moon and Because You're So Sweet is a great closer. And it has some great B-sides, but it's been one of the more frequent ones. If I am in the mood to listen to some Erasure, uh, I will pull out this album as much as, as any and probably maybe the most frequently. I wouldn't say that that makes it my favorite, but it has had quite a revival in my mind as one of the forgotten Erasure records that holds up uh, for me and is a good strong listen. It is a fun thing to listen to and doesn't feel like work. Uh, I enjoy it. Whether you'll enjoy it, whether Eric will enjoy it, I don't know. Uh, I hope so. Give it a listen. I should mention this. I am such an Erasure fan. This is a reissue uh, every so often. They put out um, 
They've been going chronologically through their catalog, kind of matching the, the, the release times, or maybe every year, I'm not sure what it is. But um, they've gotten through their catalog through the album following this, the eponymous Erasure album, um, where they release a nice uh, double disc with a lot of the B-sides, uh, new mixes, old mixes, demo versions, and stuff like that. And so I have that. I have all of those uh, that they've released to date, and uh, this one's no different. So there we have it. A great synth album, out of step for the time in 1994, but taken out of that original grunge context. I find it a lot of fun to listen to, and hopefully you might too. So I will throw that over to Eric, and he will pick an album from his collection on Monday that in some way connects to erasures. I say, I say, I say. And that's a tough thing to say over and over in a video. Still don't like the title. But beyond that, that's all I have. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.